I sat at the table, drinking Coca-Cola from the machine at the end of the hotel hallway, and watched as my best friend Joey worked her magic on the handsome young man she had picked up at the Golden Spur Bar. Joey was married, but clearly had no desire to be faithful. She had already taken off her sweater and bra, and her breasts were in full view. Everyone was Joey, her boyfriend Al, me, and Phil, who was Al's partner for the evening. Phil and I watched them have sex. I was distracted from Phil for a few moments, and he wanted to touch me. I quickly pushed his hand away, and Joey noticed. Come on, Rose, the man needs some relief. Not from me. I made that clear before we left the bar. You're so boring, she said, beckoning Phil over with a wave of her finger. Joey looked at me and said, Are you sure you don't want him? I know, and I want him, but I can't, and you know it. You need to think about yourself, girlfriend, and besides, he'll never know. You know, as do I, that he doesn't care, and he's not going to help you. It was true. It wasn't that Frank wouldn't care if I gave myself to another man, but I was sure that he wouldn't care what happened to me. Joey was driving, and I needed to get home. Joey reluctantly got dressed, and I got dirty looks from Al and Phil, but Joey knew when she asked me to go out with her what my limits were, and one of them was to be home by ten. On the way home, Joey asked, Why didn't you join? You wanted it. You could see it on your face. I wanted to. I really wanted to, but I just couldn't make up my mind. Is it still because of this stupid marriage? I suppose so. This is illogical, Rose. You are a healthy woman, and a healthy woman needs a sex life. If what you say is true, and I have no doubt that it is, Frank is not giving you what you need, and I mean need. Sex is as important as air, food, and water. I know all this, Joey, but I just can't bring myself to do it. I tried, and even came close several times, but I can't bring myself to do it. You can, Rose. You seem to have forgotten that I have known you for a very long time, and I am well aware of your sexual appetites. This was before I got married. Perhaps, Rose, but the appetites have not gone away. They're holding back, but they're still there. Joey was right, of course. Those appetites were still there, and I wasn't sure that I could hold them back for much longer. Joey really knew about my sexual appetites. More than once we went on double dates and switched partners during the evening. Joey and I were two peas in a pod. With that in mind, what happened to us after high school and three years of college was amazing. Joey met Steve, fell head over heels in love, and began to act like a real nun. Steve was a fairly straightforward person and had equally straightforward views on sex. He didn't believe in sex before marriage and didn't know about Joey's reputation so she pretended to be innocent and went to the marriage bed, not knowing how Steve would end up in bed. He turned out to be terrible, but Joey needed sex, and a lot of it, so she played on the side. I never understood this. How can you love someone and constantly cuckold them? But Joey was Joey, and I loved her like a sister, and that was none of my business. I fell in love with Frank, but not trusting that he wouldn't know what I was like, I immediately told him about my past, that I was a very sexy woman. His eyes lit up as if he had found a golden treasure. We had sex all the time from our second date until the fourth year of our marriage, and then the sex stopped there was none at all. Frank fell at work, injured his back, and was in severe pain. Add to this stress at work, leg pain from injury, late hours at work, and so on and so forth. As a result, I didn't get sex and was unhappy. I told Joey about my problem, and she said she knew what I needed. Go out, have a drink, and relax. I decided to try, but it turned out that in addition to drinking, she had several strong men in mind. Knowing her as well as I did, this shouldn't have come as a surprise. She grabbed some stallion, and naturally, he had a friend. I told them to count me out, and Joey did both while I sat and watched, resisting the urge to rip my clothes off and join in. The next time she suggested an evening out, I said yes, and she promised me that this evening would not be a repeat of the previous one. Well, that's not true. She befriended a guy who didn't have a boyfriend, went out into the parking lot, and hung out with him in the back seat while I sat inside, 
fighting off the wolves and wishing it was me in the back seat. I finally decided that to hell with the vows and would finally get what I needed at the party with Joey and went into the evening with every intention of ending my long dry spell, but not before Al and Phil joined us, I chickened out. I tried my best to remain faithful to Frank, but I knew it was a fight I would likely lose if Frank didn't get into business. I set a deadline of 10 o'clock to get home because I decided that if I didn't follow through, I'd be home before Frank went to bed and force him to have sex if I had to. He usually went to bed at 11 and waited for me at home only at 11.30 or 12. When I entered, the house was quiet, which surprised me. Frank usually sat on the couch in front of the TV, but the living room was empty. He must have gone to bed early. That's it. I headed towards the stairs, saw a flickering light coming from Frank's home office, and walked towards him. As I got closer, I saw Frank sitting in front of the computer watching adult videos. Why couldn't he make love to me? I don't know why I didn't rush into the room and confront him, but I didn't. I quietly retreated and left the house. I walked around the house, sat down on one of the chairs on the patio, and thought about what I had just discovered. Frank couldn't make love to me because of his back pain, but he did it on his own. Why wouldn't he have sex with me? Something was wrong, but what? I sat there for about 20 minutes, thinking about the situation, and then the light came on in the upstairs bedroom. Frank was already giving up. The lights went out, I waited another 10 minutes, and then returned to the house. I quietly walked into the office and closed the door behind me. I turned on the computer and checked my recent history. I typed in the address of the last visit and found myself on a site where sex stories were published. There was a My Favorites section, and I selected it. The page that came up said Note 1 to 10 of 79. I clicked on the next page, and it said Note 11 to 20 of 79. I clicked on Item 14 on the page, something called Sammy, and then read what came out. It was the story of a woman who had sex with her husband's bosses and colleagues. I clicked on the next story called Wife in the Club and read it. A random sampling of other stories revealed a common thread. All women were married. I returned to history and remembered two more recently visited sites. I couldn't access one of them because it required a password, but I was able to get to another site with stories. By the time I logged in, I was angry. This was going to cause a shit storm. Frank was sleeping, and I thought about dragging him out of bed and then going after him. But then I decided to sleep in and go after him in the morning after a night's rest. But I didn't sleep well and spent a lot of time staring at the ceiling and thinking. Not good, given my thoughts. By morning I changed my mind. I was going to see what I could find out about what Frank was doing. The next morning at breakfast Frank asked me how the evening had gone, and I said it had gone well. But I didn't think I'd be going out for drinks with Joey anymore and Frank asked why. There's something about two women sitting alone that makes every man think you're trying to hook up with guys. I'm tired of this. I want to sit and have fun, not spend the evening fending off unwanted attention. You and Joey are very beautiful girls, and you will definitely attract attention. Maybe you should look for a place where there aren't many men. Maybe find one of those gay bars. Certainly. Get rid of male attention so I can be attacked by a bunch of women then find a place to go and do something that won't put you in a situation where you'll be harassed. Find something because you really need to get out of the house every now and then. As I took a sip of coffee, I thought, maybe you need to get me out of the house. While Frank was taking a shower, I walked around the house, making some preparations, and when Frank finished taking a shower, I took mine and got ready for work. Luckily, it was a very busy day, and I was able to put my thoughts about Frank aside. That night at dinner I said, Nicholas is having a shoe sale, and I'm going to run there after dinner and see what they have. While I'm there, I'll probably look for work-appropriate dresses. Frank knew my shopping habits and knew I would be gone for at least three hours. After dinner I cleaned up, put everything in the dishwasher, grabbed my purse, and told Frank I was leaving. I left the house, drove one block and parked. I waited about 15 minutes and then went back into the house. 
I had already walked around the house, arranging the blinds and drapes so I could see the house. I didn't see anything until I walked up to the home office window. Frank took advantage of my absence. He was sitting in front of the computer. I watched for a couple of minutes or so and then went to Nicholas for some retail therapy. The shoes, dresses, jumpsuits, and bras distracted me from Frank and what he was doing. When Frank was fast asleep, I got up, went into the office, and turned on the computer. I went online, then opened my favorites and saw three sites with stories I had noticed the night before. One of them highlighted in red the stories that had been recently read, and I looked at them. And again, these were all stories about cheating wives. Wives who cheated because of blackmail, because they were taken advantage of when they were drunk, because they were forced to try to save their husband's job, and some simply because they liked doing it. As I turned off the computer, I wondered why Frank was doing this, what he was doing with me, and why did he get turned on by stories about his wife cheating on him. I met Joey for lunch, and since she has always been my closest confidant, I told her what I had discovered. What are you going to do about it? Don't know. I know what I would do if I were in your place. What? I would figure out how to become a member of those sites and how to post stories there. Once that was done, I would go and do what he was reading, write stories about it, and post them on websites. And then I would sit and enjoy what he does when he reads them. I couldn't do that. Why not? You're saying he doesn't have sex with you anymore. If you do this, wouldn't it be some kind of sexual relationship with him? I had nothing to answer, but this thought was spinning in my head for the rest of the day at work. That night I put on the sexiest negligee and the most provocative heels and offered myself to Frank in the most obvious way, but he said his back had been hurting like hell all day. This was the last straw. To hell with you, Frank, I thought, and the next day, on the way to work, I remembered Joey's offer and decided that I would do it. I took my personal laptop with me and went to a restaurant with Wi-Fi on my lunch break to connect to three sites that I realized were Frank's favorites and created author accounts on them. Back at work, I called Joey and asked when our next night out would be. I reread what I had written, found a few grammatical errors, and noticed that I had mistakenly written Joey instead of Monica in several places, so I corrected that. Then I ran the spell checker and made a few more corrections. Finally, happy with the results, I logged on to Frank's three favorite sites and posted my story. I smiled as I logged out and said to myself, Read it, bastard. One site warned that it could take up to 48 hours for a story to be posted, so I waited two days and then checked the site on my laptop. The story was there, but I couldn't tell if Frank had read it. To find out, I needed to access the site from a computer in my home office. Frank had the site set up to automatically recognize his URL, and he would log into the site without being asked for a password. I could check the list of stories, and if Frank read my story, it would be highlighted in red. That night, after Frank fell asleep, I went down to his office and turned on his computer. I went to the site and my story was indeed highlighted in red, which meant Frank had read it. I opened the favorites tab and felt slightly disappointed when I noticed that he hadn't added me to his list of favorite authors. So next time I'll have to try harder. Yes, there will be a next time, definitely. A week passed before I received a call from Joey asking if I wanted to go out. I said I was ready and we agreed to meet the next evening. This morning I told Frank that I was meeting Joey after work and that we were going out for drinks with a friend who was getting married. I told him that I might be back late and that he should not wait for me. When we arrived the place was already packed and all we could see were two seats at the bar. We sat down and ordered and I handed the bartender a twenty when he brought the drinks. He turned her down and said that the gentleman at the end of the bar had already paid for the drinks. Monica and I looked in that direction and saw a rather handsome man and we raised our glasses in gratitude. He smiled and waved slightly then turned to talk to the man sitting next to him. Monica and I sipped our drinks and looked around the place. There were at least a dozen interesting men in the establishment, and several of them were looking in our direction. I saw one of them get up and walk towards us, but before he could come, 
The man who bought us drinks was already standing in front of us. If I may, he said, my friends and I are sitting at a table, and we have two empty seats. I'd love for you to join us. I looked at Monica to see how she felt about this and saw that she had already jumped off her bar stool. The man introduced himself as Jason and then led us to a table where three other men were sitting. They were introduced as Randy, Josh, and Ryan. As soon as we sat down, another round of drinks arrived almost immediately, and within minutes Monica had Randy on the dance floor. Jason looked at her and smiled, saying, She's clearly not wasting any time. When you have a husband waiting at home, you don't want to waste a lot of time on unnecessary ceremonies. Do you think so too? Certainly. Which of us is your choice? I looked at Jason, Josh, and Ryan, then back at Jason, and thought about all the parties I went to before I got married and how much I enjoyed them, and then I said, I can't decide, so I guess I'll have to choose all of you. During my lunch break, I went to the sites where I posted my stories. One of them took three to five days to publish, and I only posted the story on it because I knew Frank was looking there. One of the sites published the story the very next day, but none of them gave me what I wanted. One of them showed what Frank was reading if he had favored my stories, but I would have to wait to see that. Two days passed, and I saw my story on the site, and that night, after Frank fell asleep, I went down to the office again and entered the site. The story was highlighted in red, so I knew Frank had read it, but I was unhappy to see that the bastard hadn't added me to his favorite author's list again. I think next time I'll have to make more efforts. Joey's husband took her on a two-week vacation, so the next time I went hunting alone. I went to the bar and ordered a drink. It seems that I was spoiled by previous outings, and instead of hearing, this is due to, I heard, that's six dollars from you. I didn't take the money out of my purse in advance, so I had to dig through it to find the right amount. Looking around, I noticed several promising men and saw that most of them were looking at me. Not even a minute had passed before one of them came up to me and asked if I wanted to dance. I smiled, said yes, and let him take me to the dance floor. When the song ended, he offered to join his company at the table, and I agreed. He asked if I would like another drink, to which I again said yes, and he went to the bar to order it. When he returned, he put the drink in front of me and moved closer to me. One said, let's get out of here. That's what I came here for, so I took my purse, and he took my hand and led me to his car. He opened the door, and I sat down. My house isn't far, he said as he started his car and pulled out of the bar's parking lot. We have arrived. He parked, walked around the car, and opened the door for me. A true gentleman. I couldn't remember the last time my husband did this. He took me by the hand and led me into the house. Once we were inside, he pulled me towards him and kissed me. Do you want me to have sex with you right now? Stupid question. I don't take my clothes off with a man to play Scrabble. This is not a stupid question at all, dear. I looked at him and thought, thank you, dear husband, if you weren't a cheating bastard, I would never have gotten the opportunity to try this. I forgot to tell you that I have a neighbor. Five neighbors? No, not like that. I do have a neighbor, but he has friends, and he invited them to poker, thinking I would be out all night. I lost track of time, and when I accidentally glanced at the clock by the bed, I exclaimed, Damn it, I need to leave. But we're not done yet. I don't care. I need to go home, otherwise my husband will suspect something. Spit, we don't want to let you go. Thinking quickly, I said, If you don't let me go home, we'll never be able to do this again. He will suspect something is wrong and will either lock me in the basement or put me on a chain to the house. As I had hoped, the thought that we might meet again made them retreat. Will there ever be another time with them? No chance. Perhaps I would have, but their threat of, we won't let you go, made me realize that I didn't want anything to do with them anymore. On the way to his car, the guy asked, Did my neighbor and his friends ruin everything for me? I still hadn't returned to the safety of my car, so I said, for you? No, 
but for them, of course, yes. When he drove me to the car, a true gentleman to the last he got out, walked me to the car and waited for me to open the door. Then he pulled me towards him and kissed me. I won't ask for your number, beautiful. If we meet again, it will be because you want it. I hope to hear from you. One last kiss, and he was gone. When I got into the car, I looked at his business card. There was only a phone number on it. I still didn't know his name, but that was fair since he didn't know mine. I rolled down the window to throw the card away, but then I thought about the wonderful feeling I had with him, so I rolled the window back up and put the card in my purse. As I drove home, I thought that my husband's afternoon adventure with his buxom mistress couldn't have been half as satisfying as my evening with the boys. Once again my story was highlighted in red, but the icing on the cake was that I was added to Frank's favorite author's list. You had to make sure you stayed there, right? My night with a stranger and his roommate and his friends convinced me that there would be no more solo nights out. After all, there is safety in numbers, so until Joey gets home, I'll be on a leash. Yes, sure, I had already taken Mr. 555-340-1863's business card out of my purse a dozen times and looked at it, but three days passed before I picked up the phone and dialed the number. When I heard the voice on the other end say, Hello, I realized that he didn't know my name any more than I knew his, so I just said, Hi, it's me. I thought you would call. I almost didn't do it. I didn't really like how our last date went. Sorry, Jerry shouldn't have been there, much less his friends, but when they showed up, my hands were tied. Besides, Jerry is my roommate and my business partner and I need to stay on good terms with him. And to be honest, you seem to be enjoying yourself. Yes, but I would like to be able to have a say in this matter, and not just be taken and used. There were two whom I would never have let near me under other circumstances. Is there any hope that this call means I can get another chance? Maybe, but only if I know it will only be you. Jerry was delighted with you. I know he would love to see you again maybe another time. When can we meet? I can go out tomorrow. What time and where? It felt weird walking into the Silver Dollar without Monica nearby. I've never been in this place alone before. I looked at the clock and saw that it was exactly seven. I looked around and didn't see Mr. 555-340-1863, so I headed to the empty booth, ordered a drink, and started scanning the crowd. If Mr. 555 didn't show up, there were a few attractive options here, and in fact one of them noticed me looking in his direction, smiled, stood up and walked towards me, but he wasn't meant to make it because Mr. 555 slid into his seat opposite me. He glanced at the approaching man, who, under the gaze of Mr. 555, turned around and walked in the other direction. That's science to me, he said. You should have come earlier. Leaving a fox like you alone for even a minute is not a smart move. You sound suspicious, like someone who wants to get into my pants. Damn, gotcha, I hate it when that happens. You're lucky I'm a girl who gives up pretty easily. Are you ready to leave? I'm not that easy. I need to drink at least a couple of times. That's bad luck. A girl who knows how to bargain. He bought me another drink and then we danced a few times. After the third drink, eager to see him in bed again, I said, Are you ready to get down to business? I was ready from the moment I pulled into the parking lot. Where is the most extravagant place you've ever had sex? On the kitchen table at my boyfriend's parents' house, while they were outside in the yard having a barbecue. What about you? Here, tonight, in the men's or women's restroom. Are you serious? Seriously, if I can talk you into it. I looked at him, saw the challenge in his eyes, and smiled at him, saying, I agree, but this should be the men's room. Why? Because if it's a women's restroom and another woman comes in, she'll see what I'm getting and want it too, and I don't want to share. What if a man comes in? He can take advantage. I've been looking for a woman like you my whole adult life. Let's go. We left the cabin, 
walked down the hallway to the restrooms, made sure no one was looking, and disappeared into the men's room. There was a lock on the door, and he reached for it, but I quickly said, No, don't. Do you know what could happen? Isn't that the point, to see if we can handle this without getting caught? Oh, sweet Jesus, I have found the one I want to spend the rest of my life with. We got to the hotel in five minutes, and there he had sex with me again. I typed the text, checked it for errors, and then proofread it. Satisfied with the result, I posted it, and two days later, I checked to see if the story was highlighted on Frank's computer. I did, and not for the first time, I wished I had a spy camera in the room to see if Frank was just reading my stories. I even thought about installing it, but then I realized that it should probably be mounted on his shoulder so that I could see if it was my words on the screen. On Monday, I sat at my desk, ostensibly looking at expense reports, while in reality I was fantasizing about having sex with my boss at a New Year's office party while Frank sat in the next room, sipping his drink and watching the dancers. People. Joey called and said she was back and invited me to lunch. Over salad and iced tea, she told me about her vacation, including the six times she managed to find a sex partner while her husband dozed or lay on the beach. There was just a delightful young messenger there. How were you? What were you doing without me? I told her about my adventures, and when I described Walter, she looked at me with disbelief. Oh my God, honey, you have to share this guy with me. That's not all. He has a friend who he says is even better, and he wants me to meet him. Are you going? Certainly. Only with a friend or with Walter and a friend? With both. She looked at me, silently thinking, and then said, You can't. Why not? They'll send you to the hospital. Aw, oh, come on, Joey, be serious. I'm serious, honey. You know men. One won't just stand by and watch, and you know that. Oh no, baby, if you're going to date both of them at the same time, I'll be there to watch over you. Monica followed me to the hotel room Walter had rented. Walter raised his eyebrows when he saw Monica, and I told him I'd explain later, and then he introduced us to Terry, a tall, well-built black man. I saw Monica glance at me quickly. I didn't tell her that Walter's friend was black and Monica was a bit racist. After a short conversation, Walter pulled me close and said, I know you only have a few hours, so let's not waste a minute. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Terry walking towards Monica and I tensed up, expecting her to say, get away from me, or something similar, but she just stood there like a fawn caught in the headlights of an oncoming car. As Joey and I drove home, I thought that tonight, as luck would have it, Frank would want to make love. I'll have to blame it on my headache because I couldn't let him have sex with me. Luckily, he was already asleep when I returned home. The next day at work, I was planning and wondering how I could spend the day with Walter or Terry, or maybe both. I thought about what excuses Frank could come up with to pull this off. Business trip. I've never been on a business trip, and secretaries don't go on business trips. Sick relatives you need to visit. They all live within half an hour of home, and Frank will want to come with me. Fall, hit your head, claim amnesia, and disappear for five days. Seriously, girl, this is impossible. I wanted to do this, but it's just not feasible. And then, in a moment of clarity, I realized that I had become a real sex hunter. Do I want this? Yes, but will I let this happen? That was the question. The facts were... I loved what Walter and Terry did for me, but I also loved my husband. Frank failed me, and I found a way to satisfy my needs, but I still loved Frank. However, I was honest with myself, knowing that if Frank didn't pull his head out of his ass or out of his computer, as it was I would eventually leave him. Do I want this? No, I don't, but I'm not going to live without sex, and if Frank doesn't start fulfilling his duties, I'll always find someone who can, and eventually I'll be found out. It's inevitable. Lovers of deception always end up caught. They always think they can get away with it, and many succeed for a while, but they almost always get caught. The questions I needed to answer were, do I want to continue until Frank catches me and throws me out the door? 
Do I want to take my destiny into my own hands and leave on my own terms, or do I want to try to save our marriage before either of the first two things happen? The answer was, try to save the marriage first. That night, after I put away the dinner dishes, I told Frank to grab a beer and sit on the couch. We need to have a serious talk, Frank. I didn't usually tell Frank what to do, so he looked at me with a little shock on his face, and I knew he was thinking, oh damn, this could be bad. But he took the beer and sat down on the couch. I poured myself a glass of white wine and went to join him. I told him that I was annoyed by the lack of sex and his constant excuses. I told him that I had him and said that if he was capable of this, then he was also capable of giving me a sex life. Then I posted what I considered to be my trump card. Either you start fulfilling your marital duties or I'll go look for a lover. I intend to have sex by Saturday of this week. The choice is yours. Do you want it to be with you or with some lucky guy I pick up at the bar? Frank turned away from me for a long moment and then looked back at me and took a deep breath. I can't. The earliest is next Wednesday, and then only if everything goes well. If everything goes well? He looked away again and I said, You need to explain yourself, Frank. He didn't look me in the eye, and I said, You want me to start looking today, Frank? I don't have to wait until Saturday. He looked at me, took another deep breath, and the story began to unfold. He and four others from his office left for a four-day training at the main office. I remembered this. One of the four was Sylvia Marsh. All four of them went to parties all four nights. Mostly we just drank and took turns dancing with Sylvia. On the third morning, Frank woke up to find himself naked in bed with a naked Sylvia. He didn't even remember, or so he said, how they got there. His memory of that night was almost completely erased. He remembered participating in some kind of drinking game with the others and getting very drunk. That morning, Morris, one of the trip participants, called Frank aside during his first coffee break and asked, You didn't sleep with Sylvia, did you? Frank admitted that he woke up with her, but had no idea how he got there, and Morris told him that he had better go to the doctor. When Frank asked why, Morris replied that Sylvia had already infected three other guys in the group with the social disease. It turned out that Frank was fourth. He pretended his back hurt so he wouldn't have to make love to me while he was treating his illness. Nonsense, Frank. She can be cured in less than six months. He turned away again and said, It's gone, but it takes up to six months to make sure you don't have the virus from another disease. I couldn't risk giving it to you. I couldn't live with it if I did. I have my six-month checkup on Monday and the results will be out on Wednesday. I sat and looked at him, thinking about what he told me. I had no problem believing that this could happen. This also happened to me several times before meeting Frank. One time I woke up in a country house by the lake with six students, not remembering what happened that night. Then I realized that Frank had to restrain himself to protect me. I probably should have felt bad about it, but to be honest, I didn't. I was very sexual, and I needed it. What I needed to do now was get the train back on the tracks and get it moving in the right direction. Okay, Frank, I'll be faithful until Wednesday, but I expect you to call me at work as soon as you get your results and tell me you're clean. If you're not clean, I'll leave work and go to the bar, where there's music and guys looking for a good time. Frank looked at me strangely and then said, Is that all? No, I'll kill you or I'll make you regret ever meeting me. No, Frank, you're a man, and all men are prone to stupidity when it comes to women. Don't you hate me? Don't you want to kick me out of the house for cheating? Look, Frank, I'm angry, okay? But I believe you when you say it happened, and you don't know how. I'm not happy that you made me abstain for six months, but on the other hand, I'm very happy that you took care not to infect me with those gifts that Sylvia gave you. This does not mean that I let you get away scot-free. I am serious about getting sex, and your punishment will be that you will know that someone, someone else can do it if you don't get your permit on Monday. This is your punishment, Frank. You'll be worrying all next week about whether your wife will get someone else. Would I actually do it, and then rub it in his face? No. I would make him worry, though. I thought about meeting Walter again, 
but it would be before the weekend if I decided to do it, and I would make sure Frank didn't suspect that I had changed my plans for Wednesday. Did I feel bad about what I had done and what I was about to do? No, I didn't feel it. My take on it was that Frank made me do it. Through his actions, he forced me to take care of myself. If he had immediately admitted that Sylvia had infected him, I would have accepted it, as I accepted his confession later. Like I said, I could imagine that this could happen because it happened to me. If he had been honest from the start, we could have had a sex life, but he hid the problem, pretended he had back pain, and it ended up leading me to seek what I was supposed to get from him elsewhere. So yes, what I did was Frank's fault. I thought about Walter all night, and by the time I went to work the next morning, I decided I wanted one last time, but only if I could do it on my terms. I called him on the first break and asked if he could take Friday off. He said he probably could, and then asked what I was up to. I have some vacation money, and I want to take one day off Friday and spend the whole day with you. That's definitely an incentive to take the day off. Just me, or do you want to invite Terry too? I had to think about it for a few seconds, if Terry wants to join. I'm definitely in, but I need to talk to Terry. Agree and find us a hotel room with a strong bed. It will be done. Call me around three. At two o'clock, Joey called me. You damn prostitute. Why are you stealing my boyfriend? He just called me and said he couldn't meet me on Friday because he had a meeting with you. Your boyfriend? Yes, you bitch, my boyfriend Terry. Oh, stop it, Joey. He's black and you're a racist. I'm a racist in love with sexting him. I've been seeing him every day since I met him. You could have told me, and then I would have said no when Walter asked me if I wanted Terry to join us on Friday. Oh, stop it, you. I'm just teasing you. The truth is, I've been seeing him every day since I met him, and I'm going to keep seeing him, but I'm willing to share. Why don't you join us on Friday, then? I can't be free on Friday. Maybe next time. There won't be a next time. Friday is my swan day. Next week, I'll go back to Frank. Have you figured out what's happening to him? Long story, I'll tell you the next time we have lunch. Swan day, huh? So I can pick up Walter. It's up to him, but I'll put in a good word for you. You do that? And on Friday? Yes. Be gentle with my man. Don't hurt him too much because I'll need him on Saturday. You are incorrigible. I know. We'll talk later. I called Walter at three o'clock, and he said that Terry agreed and that he had a room at the Hilton downtown. I told him I would meet him at the hotel restaurant at eight. I was sitting at the table drinking coffee at ten minutes to eight when Terry entered the room. He walked over to the table, sat down, and ordered coffee when the waitress came over. Walter said he'll check in and then go to the room. He'll call me on my cell phone and tell me the room number. I can't tell you how glad I am that you wanted to meet me again. Yeah, but I feel a little guilty. Guilty? Why should you feel guilty? Joey called me and accused me of trying to steal her boyfriend. Am I her boyfriend? I'm just saying what she told me. Then I guess I should take better care of her but I won't start until today. His cell phone rang and he answered. 516, got it. We'll be there now. When the door to number 516 opened, I saw Walter and five other men. I looked at Walter and he smiled at me. You said we'd have all day, so I thought we'd have a real party. I laughed and said, you smart guy, turn on the radio and find some boom boom music. Close the door and when you turn on the music, knock twice and open the door wide. I want to make a dramatic entrance so that everyone remembers it. As you say, he replied and closed the door. I turned around sharply and ran to the elevator. No chance of me going into that room. The thing was, I didn't want to deal with these seven men in particular. More precisely, not with seven, but with five of them. These five were the same guys Walter shared with me the night we met. I still remember the tone of voice of the one who said, You're out of luck. We don't want to let you go. No, no way. 
Walter just robbed us both of a wonderful day. I was really looking forward to spending the whole day with Terry and Walter. I called Joey and asked to meet for lunch. I thought you'd be naked during lunch. I'll tell you everything over lunch. Over dinner, I told Joey the whole story, starting with why Frank had been avoiding me, then about my first night with Walter and what happened that morning. Be very, very careful if Terry talks about going out with Walter. Be sure to explain to him that you're only interested in him and Walter, not the whole crowd. By the way, I told Terry that you called him your boyfriend. What did he say to that? Said he should start taking better care of you. Ooh, I like it. Just be careful, girlfriend. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one. Click to the next one. Click to the next one.